Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood YouTube wizard, Jareth Tempest again. Uh, I know it's been a really long time since I've posted anything, and in fact, I you know, hadn't even really even thought about the channel for you know many months, and then I went and, um, for whatever reason, I went, I think I went to share one of the videos in, in one of my groups or something, and uh, I saw that there was a lot of views and that a lot of people were showing interest in these. So I figured, well, I better... Um, keep making these and we'll see where it goes. I'm not sure what I will end up, you know, doing over the long run, but you know, we'll see what happens and we'll see how often I can make something. I'll try to get something up. I, I definitely can't promise once a week, but maybe once every couple of weeks or once a month or something, you know, for a little while until, uh, uh, at least while I'm working, uh, during the summer, I, you work a lot of hours during the summertime. So we'll see what happens, but um, a lot has happened since the last videos. I have written two books of my own, and I think that we will talk about those books today and, and how to work the ritual that both of those books are about. Uh, the books are Raziel's Paths of Power, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, volume 1 deals with the angels of the 72-letter name, and Volume 2 uh, deals with the archangels and the angels of the 42 letter name and i have 30 archangels listed in that book so both books have 72 uh angels that you work with anyway the uh the main focus of the book however is pathworking and pathworking is a it's a really old technique uh, it's probably one of the earliest techniques actually and i kind of talk about that a little in the second book so it's not that we're dealing with anything particularly new. What is new, I think, is kind of the way it's presented. And I owe that to Theodore Rose when, in his book, Lucifer and the Hidden Demons, where he presents path workings, just a, a few short lines, and then you, as opposed to big paragraphs of text, like a lot of people do path work and don't even know it. They just call it guided meditation. But it's the same thing, where it's when one person is doing the uh, initial journey, so to speak, to the angel or whatever entity you're, you're path working with, and then they're explaining how to get back there for other people to follow. And that's really the gist of what path working is. And what makes mine different uh, is that is the Archangel Raziel. And so just to sum it up, what you do is you first approach the Archangel Raziel and then you ask her to guide you to the other angels, whichever other angel you decide to work with. And then you do that path working with Raziel and Raziel will act then as your guide and make sure that you get to the right angel and that the connection that you have with that angel is stronger. You can do the path workings without Raziel, but uh, you might not be able to, you know, the communication might not be as clear and, you know, your connection might be a little fuzzy, but it, it's just easier if you work with Raziel. And that's really kind of with all magic. Like when you're trying to work with spirits, if you, you can always use Raziel to help make things easier and, and make a stronger connection. Um, so kind of the story, the backstory of how this came about was I was actually working on a different project. Uh, I was trying to get some sigils with Raziel and um, I was doing full evocations on a regular basis. Like every day I was trying to, cause I was trying to, you know, uh, get these sigils. And so every day I would do these, uh, the full evocation of Raziel and it's exhausting to do a full evocation every day um at least for me it, it drains a lot of uh, my energy and i'm always very tired afterwards and i just kind of was like raziel it sure would be great if there was a quicker way or an easier way to to do this and suddenly i had this path working in mind and so i closed the ritual down and then i tried the path working and it worked and it put me in communication with Raziel. And I mean, it's different from a full evocation. Uh, and the communication is, is a little different and, and the way things, you know, look and stuff are, are it's because it, it's, it's a different ritual, 
but I didn't feel drained afterwards and I didn't feel, um, it didn't take as long. It's a much easier process and I didn't, I don't need anything except my book or your, my notes or whatever I was using at the time. And, uh, so then I immediately get online and contact my buddy and asked him to try it. And, you know, and, and he did and it worked for him. And so then, you know, I put it up in, in one of the groups and other people were getting success. It was working. And then someone else was like, Hey, I've got this path working that another author wrote for uh, Uriel. And so people started sharing path workings and, and like, I've tried that Uriel one and it worked. Don't get me wrong. It did work. And, but again, I didn't feel like it was, um, as strong as the, what I had done with Raziel. And so I used Raziel to connect me to Uriel using that other path working. And it came through much stronger. The connection was there. And I, that's when like that Euro, Eureka moment in my head went off. It's like, this is, you know, we've got something here. And, um, you know, the next thing that really confirmed that was when I went to Raziel to, um, uh, give me more path workings to different angels. And, Raziel was more than happy to do it. So, you know, and now here we are with these uh, books. So the ritual is very simple. It doesn't require uh, many tools, like I was just saying. All you really need is, is just your, you know, the book so you can see the path working. And, um, you know, it's a lot of people are really intimidated by path working because it is uh, what's you know known as visionary magic where you use your imagination to you know to communicate with with angels and people get concerned they think it's just in their head and I think that that is a, a gross misunderstanding of how magic works and how the world works uh, our imagination is an incredibly powerful tool and can very well be used as a threshold of communication with spirits. And, uh, it's you, you know, people use their imagination for all different kinds of magic for different reasons. And it's never just in your head. So, uh, actually in the second book, I, I kind of dig into that a little bit. Um, I'm not going to cover all that right now, but just, um, you know, it just, you know, it's, and it's real easy to try out. Like I, I've got path workings on my website. So you can just go to my website and you can try it. So you don't have to buy the book to try it. You can just go to my website and try the you know, path working for Raziel. And there's a bunch of different spirits and you can just try it out. It's, you know, don't make a big deal out of it. It's one of the, the things that I think people, you know, they expect this, you know, huge mind blowing experience. And, it can be, but sometimes it's not. And usually the archangels, because they're not, you know, dicks, they don't want to, you know, they're not trying to blow your mind. And they usually approach you in a, in a gentle, uh, comforting way. And so I wouldn't, you know, so don't be afraid and don't, and I, and don't think that it's also, you know, that it's just in your head. It's, it's, um, I just really just, you know, just try it. It's, it's the best way. So here's how we do it. Um, the path working for Raziel is when you look at the book, it says path working, uh, inside a dark cave. And then the next line is a waterfall at the exit of a cave in the distance. And then at the exit, the sun shines through a waterfall, creating rainbows. And then it says a light field forest of pine trees. What the hell is this? <laughs> You're probably thinking so. The the basic thing of path well, the way the path working works is each line describes a, a specific image and you just simply imagine that image. And it doesn't matter if you create a whole new image using your imagination or if you just remember uh, as something that was similar and it's fine and it doesn't have to be uh, specific. It's like. If it's a dark cave, it, as long as it's a dark cave, it works. It doesn't have to be a specific dark cave. Uh, just whatever pops in your head whenever you hear the phrase inside a dark cave is correct. 
it doesn't matter if it matches mine at all. And so what you, yeah, again, you just, you visualize each image sequentially. And that's really the gist of the whole ritual. <laughs> you, and it sounds, I know it sounds super easy, too easy. And that's sometimes hard for people to wrap their head around, but it really works. And it has changed my life and it's changed um, my wife's life and just it's really amazing and I really can't wait for you to, to try it yourself. So, you know, when you start the ritual, you uh, you might want to, you know, take a, a moment just to quiet your brain, uh, your brain, concentrate on your breathing or something. Uh, there is an opening ritual that I use in the book. I guess we can go over that real quick. It is not necessary. You know, that's why I call it the optional ritual. How can I get back? I gotta get back to the table of contents on my copy here. Okay. The opening ritual. So, okay. Uh, I, you start by closing your eyes and then just start imagining uh, times when you have messed up or um, and this initially comes from a lot of the old grimoires when they're talking about, um, uh, they're very Catholic. And so they always talk about confessing your sins before you try any magic. And while I don't think that your quote unquote sins are going to affect your ability to do magic, I think that there is something to the process of acknowledging that you're human and that you're fallible and that you make mistakes. And then you grow from you you in you take on the role of the magician in this ritual, and when you do that, then you you know you have all of the power of divinity within you, and you can command great cosmic forces. And that's really what the the ritual is is about: is to get you in that mindset that you uh, you have power. And so again, let's start, you close your eyes and you think about the times that you've messed up or that you've been, um, you've made, you, you, maybe you've hurt somebody or you just, you know, made a fool of yourself or something like that. Just something that reminds you of your humanity. And then you imagine divinity approaching you. And when you do this, you can use any imagery that works for you. Like, um, whatever symbol you can think of that represents divinity like you know for you know a christian you might see the cross or uh you could also picture like you know the all-seeing eye or anything like like that or just you know an abstract image that represents to you of of, of godlike power uh you can use the sun it's used a lot in in these modern grimoires it's, it's kind of stand in for divinity is the sun and you just but you imagine something with great power and that power approaches you and then you say naka ia oe which is hebrew uh it's kind of a slurred uh hebrew if you look up the actual thing you're going to see it's it's pronounced slightly different but this is just kind of the way it's done for whatever reason i'm not going to get into all of the details uh but if you do look up the thing and you see that it's not correctly translated don't freak out so but then you imagine you say this and then you imagine the divinity entering you and in that moment then you just need to stop and recognize that you and are one with divinity and that you have power and that you can take control of your life and you can make change then you start the path working and and so you just imagine yourself inside a dark cave. However, that looks to you. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's all good. And then you imagine that there's a waterfall at the exit of the cave in the distance. And so, you know, now you're a little bit closer to the way out and you can see the light and it's coming through this waterfall that's on the outside of the cave. So then the next one, you're at the exit. And the sun shines through the waterfall and it's creating rainbows. 
And with all of these path workings, there's usually like a little key image that is really the, the main thing. And with Raziel's path working, it is that those rainbows in that waterfall. So it's real important that you take a moment to recognize the water, uh, the, the rainbows in that waterfall. And then a light filled pine, uh, a light, a light filled forest of pine trees. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't need to try to transition from one to the next. Like you don't have to imagine yourself passing through the waterfall into a forest or anything like that. You could just jump to a light filled forest of pine trees. And some of the path workings in the book are more uh, cinematic almost. Like you can see it all playing out before you. And other ones are kind of, they skip. It's just, you know, I, I wrote, I write them down as they come to me and sometimes they make more sense than others. So, um, and the final one, yeah, a light filled forest of pine trees. And you just imagine yourself in this forest of pine trees with the sun shining down and, uh, illuminating everything. And once you're there, you simply call out to Raziel and, you're doing this all in your mind. You don't need to say anything out loud and try using a voice that you feel like echoes through that reality. Um, something that resonates, something that someone who is on the other end of the forest, they could hear you. Uh, the other way to do it is to sing. And again, you can do this in your mind. You don't have to do it out loud. Um, angels react well to singing. And so you can, you know, sing Raziel's name and then um, wait for something to happen. And this something is very different for everyone. There's no, again, there's no right or wrong. Um, I feel the energy of Raziel. Uh, I'm clairsentient, so I, I feel uh, things before I usually get visuals or I hear. Um, and so I, I, even if I don't see Raziel, I feel Raziel. And that, that's something I want to point out. Even I don't always see Raziel, but I always feel Raziel. So it's going to be different for everybody. A lot of people report music. I have never heard music. music. Um, you might... It might just feel like a change in temperature or it might feel um, just like someone's in the room with you. There's lots of different things. On the other hand, you might very well see an archangel appear before you. And to me, Raziel appears as a woman, but that doesn't mean that Raziel can't appear in any other way to you. There's no, Again, there's no right or wrong. Uh, traditionally, Raziel is an old man with a beard. You know, people have told me that they see a a snake dragon. <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding. It's it's just it's all very personal, and it just deals with how your subconscious translates the information it's getting from the archangel, and and this is one of the reasons why it's important to know yourself. And you can understand, and then you can understand why an angel or any spirit would appear the way it does. But that's a much deeper uh, issue that I don't think we need to get into here on this thing. This is probably going to be longer than it needs to be anyway. So you, um, you call to Raziel, you wait, and then you um, wait for something to happen, some, something to change, something to, to appear. And you may or may not, Feel something, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, if but after a few moments of and of calling to Raziel, and you can keep calling, repeat. Um, don't let it be a chant. Don't don't fall into a a, a, hip, a hypnotic type trance thing. That's not what we're going for here. You want to be actively calling uh, and trying to get somebody's attention as though you're speaking to somebody. So call her name and hopefully you know, something will happen. But if not, and if nothing happens, then go ahead and make your request. And 
the basic way that you do this is you take a moment and you feel your need. Uh, whatever it is that you want, you want it for some reason or whatever. And uh, just take a moment to get a give a emotional uh, response to that need. You know, it's you know, feel the desire or feel the anger or or the uh, the sadness, whatever it is, you know, that you want. Take a moment to kind of feel how it makes you feel to not have it, and then make your request. And used to, I was, I would always try to do it in the present tense in the short way, almost as though, you know, using the same format I would use if I was making a, uh, a sigil. And I do still make it short, but I don't worry about the present tense. Um, I still get great results regardless. It's your intention more than anything else that matters. It's your intention and it's your emotions. And if you can manage to get those things under control, then you can make great things happen. And so you, you know, make your request. And then I have a longer version of this in the book um, that go, that helps because if you have trouble maybe with the emotional part of it, it will help kind of structure, you know, by its structure will help you uh, change your emotions throughout the, the, the process of it so that you can get a, a good result because that, Emotional alchemy is is, a, is an important aspect of magic that is overlooked in a lot of different forms. And it really is um, kind of the language, the real language of spirits is emotion. And so it's, it's not something that you want to skip. You want to take the time to get it right. So then you make your request and then you, uh, you thank Raziel or you, uh, yeah, it, even you want to, uh, sorry, I'm stuttering. <laughs> you want to thank Raziel and you want to thank her as though you've already got the results or that you know that it's going to happen. You want that confident, you know, thanks. And that's how, and then that's it. You, um, you go back to the beginning inside the dark cave and that's kind of how you close out the path working. If you forget that last part of going back to the cave, then, the ritual doesn't necessarily end. Raziel might still, you might still have that connection with Raziel or, and then you, um, you might need to do, you know, like do a grounding ritual or something later on as you, you might, you know, start getting, uh, Raziel's energy has put you very much in a, a, a weird headspace if you, uh, let it keep going. So you might have to do a grounding or something. You don't want to have to go through all that. It's just easier just to go ahead and close the ritual out. Um, and that's just a basic path working with Raziel. If you're going to work with a different angel, like you're going to go from Raziel to the Archangel Michael, then what you would do is you would do the path working for Raziel, but instead of making a request and with an emotional response, you would just simply say, guide me to the Archangel Michael or guide me to Michael. And then you would immediately go into the path working for Michael, which... We'll do now. Hold on. So you've done Raziel's path working, and then you go to uh, ask Raziel to guide you to Michael. And so then, without any, there doesn't need to be any transition or anything. Then you're going to just immediately think of a volcano with a red hot lava pouring down the mountain. And then, then you imagine a raging wildfire. And then you can imagine that wildfire, the next line is a firestorm with tornadoes of fire. So you can imagine that same wildfire getting bigger with those big tornadoes of fire, which you can Google if you've never seen it. It's, it's pretty intense. You know, it can be the same wildfire or it can be a completely different wildfire. If you, however you want to do it, it's, it's, it's fine. And then you imagine that that fire is reflected off a polished metal shield. And then you would say, you know, Michael's name, you call out to Michael. And just like with Raziel, you know, you can do the different, you can, you know, try to sing it or you can, whatever you want to do. Um, and then you wait for Michael's to respond. And you, then you would make your request, just like I talked about with Raziel. And then 
The only difference is though, that when you're done, you say, thank you to Michael. And then, then you say, thank you to Raziel. And then you go back to Raziel's cave. It's always Raziel's cave that you go back through. And that is the end of the mental part of the ritual in the new book. I, um, the diff- this is the big difference between book two and book one. In book two, between the time of book one and book two, I I did some more research and just kept working the system. And I discovered that if you are doing magic that's a uh, that's almost completely in uh, a mental astral type thing, it's really a good idea to do something in the physical realm to anchor that into our world. So usually, you know, if you you have to kind of keep it in a kind of a magical mindset, what you could do is make a little quick sigil. And all I ever do with this is just, I do a quick, quick, like two second scribble. You know, I just, you know, take a pen and just scribble it across the page uh, real quick. And then I might, if I feel like it, um, fix it up a little bit just so it looks right or make a copy of it into another notebook. And that's just, uh, that's a practice I picked up from, uh, I think, Gordon White, where you put it in one notebook, but then you copy it into another notebook. And it just, uh, the process of the copying. But each time, and you want to be making sure that you are thinking about the ritual that you did and that you're putting that experience into that ritual, I mean, into that sigil. Um, But it's important to know that it doesn't have to be a sigil. I say, I I, kind of talk about sigils because, again, I, you know, as a magician, I, I work with sigils a lot, and so uh, it comes natural. But you could do anything. Now, as a magician, you should also be writing a journal to keep track of all your rituals. The act of writing it into your journal, will, you know, it counts for this. You just want to make sure that you are putting, that you have, you know, you know, and that you have the intention that you are anchoring that ritual into our world by writing it down in your journal. Um, but again, it doesn't have to just be a journal. It can be anything. It can be anything you're doing into this world. Uh, you can do a drawing, a painting, you can do a song, a poem, you could do an interpretive dance or just make a gesture that just some form of thing that anchors the, that magic here, because what is happening is you've done, you know, using your mind and your imagination, you've created something new in the astral which can is within that has a a conceptual place where ideas um can happen and then you're trying to make that idea become a reality and so you're pulling that idea out of the astral and bringing it into our world and this is really what a ritual is for it's to bring something that's a from the conceptual to the real world, to the material world. I don't, I shouldn't use the word real because it implies that the conceptual is not real. It's totally real. It's just as real as our world. We just perceive it differently. Um, so you're, but you're bringing that concept, the conceptual thing from the conceptual realm to the material realm. And that will help make your magic work. That will help you get the results that you're after. So you don't want to skip it. You want to do this. Um, now, obviously, when I you know did the first book, I didn't have this, but it still worked. So it's not a hundred percent you have to do this, but because I've got you know lots of results from without doing it, a lot of other people got results without doing it. Maybe some of it was because you know we are keeping the journal or whatever, but. That, you know, there's no, I don't know how to put this without pissing people off, but there's really are no hard and fast rules to magic. There's just a handful of things that you need to work and and it's all going to be a little different for everybody. And so you find out, you take what other people do and then you do it and you try to figure out what works best for you. And you might have to make a little adjustment here or there. Um, and that's... You know, and as I'm doing this, as I'm discovering this and having the revelations, then I'm doing that as well. I'm kind of figuring out really the best way to do it. And I'm trying to what goes in the book is um, 
what will have a more universal effect, what will work for more people. And some people might not need that step. Others who haven't had success with this, that might be the key ingredient that's been missing from the whole thing. So try it out. See if it works for you, if it helps. If you think it's totally bunk or whatever, just don't do it then, I guess. Um, but what's fun is uh, I have a whole section in the book about strategy and how you um, can use magic to make things, you know, to really make things work because a lot of people have trouble. They can do the magic, but they have trouble figuring out what to do the magic for or how to do it best, whatever. And I kind of talk about how you can more strategically just add, strategically target your magic. So if you have something like say a job interview where you're doing rituals to make yourself more impressed, seem more impressive, to speak well, communicate well, you're doing rituals to make the other person be more receptive. You want to do, you know, rituals to, so that you're there on time. There's all kinds of different things that you can do for one big thing. So maybe what you you do all these different rituals over the course of a week, and then before, like the night before the big interview, you you take all the sigils that you've made from all the different rituals, and you can do like a little bit more of a ceremonial ritual <clears throat> or something with using those sigils. Um, and something that I do, I, I don't do it for everything, but I do this sometimes. Um, the Archangel Nathaniel is, he's kind of, I don't know, he almost seems like the patron angel of uh, making your dreams come true, of uh, material, you know, manifestation, that's the word I was looking for, uh, of manifesting your dreams. And he'll also help you uh, motivate yourself to get off your butt, to go, make your dreams come true too. He's a really great angel to work with, but because he's the, the, you know, the archangel of making your, uh, of manifestation, he's, he's a good one to use for this type of thing. And, and this is just an example. You don't have to do this. And you could, if you, there's a different angel that, um, works better for what you're doing, then by all means use that one. But then what I do is I, I kind of do the path working with Raziel to get me to Nathaniel and then there, but I kind of do it in a situation where it's like, I kind of jump from, uh, ritual here to the ritual uh, path working uh, astral type thing because I've got the physical things and then I will present them to uh, Nathaniel and ask him to to fire them as though they were uh, you know a normal sigil and I was asking asking a spirit to, to charge and fire those sigils because therefore you've got a kind of a double whammy <laughs> you're getting uh you know, you've done the ritual already, and now you're having this other angel come in and um, kind of just do his take on it. And if this sounds totally stupid to you, then don't worry about it. Um, and you don't have to do it with Nathaniel. You can do it. Uh, you could do it your, if you have a it's very similar to uh, chaos magic. So you can do whatever you do usually to fire a sigil for chaos magic. If you um, you know, meditate on them or um, you know, or whatever. You know, some people masturbate, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, or don't. It's fine if you just want to toss them when you're done, whatever. Um, but that does add just an extra little level of um, something you can do. And again, I don't do that with everything, but I can. I do it when it's like something bigger. Um, something that has a lot of different aspects that I'm trying to bring together. And so that's pretty much it as far as the ritual and how it works. Um, again, in the books, I've got different sections. I kind of explain um, the bare bones of what magic is. So, and then I talk about the astral and kind of what it is and what path working is. And, and I do talk about communicating with spirits. And I think that I might touch on some of that here because this is something that really does confuse people. Um, and I kind of was talking about it earlier. You know, when you are doing the ritual and a spirit, people expect a spirit to just suddenly to appear and you have a conversation like you would a person. And that's what movies, and in fact, a lot of occultists try to make it sound like that's what happens. 
And for some, it does. I'm not saying it's impossible or anything. Uh, but that's not the response that everyone gets. And if, if and if you're not happy because you're not getting that, and you don't think a ritual works because you're not getting that level of communication, then you're missing out because it doesn't necessarily work that way for everybody, especially not at the beginning. You, you, it, magic is subtle and spirit communication is subtle. That means it's usually not big fireworks and stuff. It can be a, a tiny voice in your head and it can be, and it can have your voice. And this is where it gets really confusing. Um, very often, you know, we already have several different like lines of dialogue in our head. I know I've usually got two or three different, you know, things going on. Somebody's always playing music too. So the key to com spirit communication is to learn how to quiet those other voices and to know yourself well enough so that if you hear something, you can recognize if that came from you or if it came from someone else. Um, and that really takes practice. You need to do a lot. You need to meditate and learn how to silence and control your mind. And you need to learn how to focus. Um, and this isn't just for path working. This is for all magic. Um, the spirit communication is, it's, it's like, it's a very subtle art and sometimes it's real easy. Like the spirit's loud and has a lot to say and, and really does make it easy for you. And then other times, you know, you barely hear anything or you don't hear anything at all. And, you know, there's lots of different ideas of why that might be. It could be the timing. It could be uh, just your mood or whatever at the time. Or, uh, And again, there's all kinds of reasons why. But it's just real important that you, you try to pay attention to the little things. And you always need to be careful of things that are confirming what you already think or believe. Because that could very well be your ego and not the spirit. If you have something that's being very contradictory to what you think or believe, then you're pretty, you know, you, you know, for sure that you've, you know, you've got something. Um, but then sometimes, you know, the spirit is what has put that in your head in the first place. So again, it just really takes practice, <clears throat> but I want to stress that it, um, it isn't always a loud voice and it's, it's mostly going to be a voice that sounds like you amongst several other voices that are you. And so you just need to learn to be able to pick out that one and you need to trust your instincts and you got to trust your intuition. And very often it's the very first thing that pops in your head. When you ask a question, that first answer is, is often the spirit. Um, I think that that's about all that I really wanted to talk about in the video. I'm sure that there's lots of other uh, questions. Oh, something I do get a lot. Uh, how often can you do this? How often, like, how often do you need to do this ritual? Um, and what I like to tell people is you can do it as often as you want. Um, like, well, first off, let's talk about, um, for one result, uh, you know, you, you want to, let's take one that I've done, I've done myself where I wanted to improve my imagination. And so what I did is I just, I, uh, made a, a kind of a promise to myself and the angel that I was going to do that ritual once a week for three months. And that's what I did. So I did that and I had great results from that. Um, and that's just something that I came up with on my own. Like I, there's no, nothing told me that I need to do it once a week for three months. That's just what I decided I was going to do. And then I did it. And so you can do the same thing. You can say, well, I'm going to do this every day for a week, or I'm going to do this every day, uh, for a month, or you, I can, I'm going to do this every full moon, or I'm going to do this you know, every three days, you know, it doesn't, there's, it's whatever works for you. Um, and once is fine. If you just want to do something, that's just one and done, then that should work too. 
and that's fine. It's just um, figuring out what works best for you. And uh, there's a lot of different opinions on this. And I used to be a lot more like just you just need to do it once. But I'm beginning to see that repetition is not a bad thing. But the thing is that you don't want to repeat a ritual because you think you did it wrong. That's the big no-no. If you want, if you just want, you know, and that's why I like to have, you know, you have the idea you're going to do it multiple times already in your head before you've even done the ritual. That way, if you go in and you do and you repeat the ritual, it's not because you don't think you did it right. Because if you have that kind of doubt, that doubt can, can sabotage your magic. So it's an important beforehand to pick a, pick whatever schedule you're going to go with. And do it that way. I, I was looking recently in the uh, the new Avatar Power book, and he has you know you do the ritual every day until you get the results. So and I know that the like the Gallery of Magic kind of the you know they they're the ones that started this whole kind of modern grimoire movement. So but they've always been very much just do it once, don't repeat, and that's you know where a lot of us got that. But it, as we are getting more and more into practice. We see that repetition is not a bad thing. It's just your motivations for why you're repeating the ritual. Um, and as far as how many rituals you can do in a single day, my answer is always going to be however many that you can give your full attention to. If that's 20, then you can do 20 different rituals in one day. If it's one, and then that's it. You're done. You can't really focus anymore. That's fine. Just figure out what you want. You just don't want to overdo it and half-ass any of the rituals. You know, it's important that you give every one of them your full attention and focus. And as far as doing magic for others, yes, you can do path working for other people. And just whenever you get to the request moment, you know, thing, you want to feel, don't try to put yourself in their position, what they're feeling. You want it to deal with it from your feelings on that other person needing whatever it is that they need. How does that make you feel? And then you want to have the gratitude of, you know, that it's happened and how that makes you feel that they have that. And that's, that's really the only difference. But, um, you know, I do rituals like for uh, my wife all the time. I talk about it in the book, one with a, a healing ritual for, um, with uh, Raphael when she had hurt her hand. So yeah. And it, I mean, and it works. So you can, um, you can definitely do magic for others and you just, again, you want to focus on how it makes you feel though and not try to put yourself in their, in their shoes. So I think that that is it. I'm sure I will think of more that I should have put in. I almost always do, but I think this has gone on long enough. I do want to take a moment to kind of tell you um, about some things I've got going on. Like I just came out with the new books and I would, you know, if you want to check those out, uh, it's Raziel's Pass of Power, Volume 1, and Raziel, and then Archangel Pathworkings with the subtitle, Ar uh, Raphael's Pass of Power, Volume 2. Um, and you can always just search uh, Amazon for my name, Jareth Tempest. Um, I've also got a Patreon going now and on the Patreon, uh, for $2, you can get access to all of the path workings I've ever done. I've got the path workings for both books up. I've got path workings for tons of other spirits. Most of, you know, some of them are, are going to come out in other books. Some of them will never come out in a book. They'll just be Patreon, uh, exclusives. And, uh, and if you pay, uh, $5 a month. Then there's a, uh, a weekly ritual that you can do be a part of where you uh, kind of do a path working tour uh, to the astral temple that I've constructed for the for the pa uh, Patreon. And you um, you put your desire in a book and then I, you know, come in once a week and I will, you know, charge and fire off that all everything that's in that book. And then there's a but I also have a, um, a guided it meditation slash hypnosis type thing, a version of it that you can take advantage of. <clears throat> and then for the 
a thirty dollar tier, which is the energy worker tier. I don't have I don't know how many slots are still available. I think there's like twelve or something open. Um, I, you'll get an attunement every month, something like Reiki or a Shadi or Ascension, uh, Kundalini Reiki or uh, Karunaki or Imara. And cause a lot of these are pretty expensive, um, and there's a ton of them. So, like, the Ascension ones are $250 each, and there's five levels of it, so that's a lot of money. Uh, but you get it through Patreon, it's just $30 a month, so over the, you know, time frame, uh, you end up saving a lot of money, especially for that Ascension program. And what those are, um, it's attunements that kind of restructure your energy systems, your chakras, primary energy centers and whatnot. <clears throat> And uh, it opens up new chakras, and it just really helps where you, uh, for like your energy work, and not just for doing things like Reiki and, and Shadi, but for also uh, for magic. Um, the energy flows much better, and it when your energy is moving cleanly, then your psychic abilities are increased. Um, that can help. Then you know, obviously that helps your spirit communication. And it helps you just doing magic because a whole bunch of this is, is energy in and out. And we don't talk about that as much in the occult community. It's thought to be too new agey or whatever, but this stuff has helped me dramatically. And I really hope that some of you take advantage of this, um, especially like if you're a beginner and you're having trouble with, um, you know, the spirit communication, then it's getting something like, you uh, Reiki or a shoddy will definitely help clear out that stuff and it will start the process. I'm not trying to, I'm not making promises that all of a sudden you're going to hear the big booming voices or anything, but it will start the process where you can get better and better and it will speed that process up dramatically. Like you'll make, uh, in the first you know month, you'll make more progress than most people would make in a year. <clears throat> and that's, you know, just the way it works. Plus, you know, they're also all have very, you know, good healing um, capabilities as well. But I focus more on how they can help you as a magician. So anyway, and then I've um, got all kinds of new stuff in the works. Um, I do want to stress, though, if you are into this just for the videos, don't worry about the Patreon because I'm not sure how often I'm going to be able to make these. And I don't want you thinking that by joining the Patreon, you're going to be guaranteed new videos or something. Uh, the videos are kind of an extra. So, and I guess that is it. Um, I guess I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.